Africa, we have today about 800 million of uh, SIM connections, and we have broadly 50% of the population, the entire population, that is connected uh, to uh, the mobile phone. And uh, most youth um, who are young farmers and who are in urban or suburban area, almost all of them have now access to mobile phone and can take advantage of any uh, market information that we may want to disseminate, for example, on uh, um, through mobile phone. And the other thing that I want to, 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 to mention is that um, actually a critical issue is that youth businesses are not actually creating jobs. Uh, we know we are encouraging young people to become entrepreneurial, but one key challenge is that they have they are facing different um, different problems, which leads to the fact that uh, most businesses led by youth, um, especially in the first three, four years, they are not creating jobs apart from the owner of the company. So how we can uh, improve that is the critical issue because if you want to help them have more revenue, if you want them to create jobs, we know that public sector is not creating enough jobs, we then need to really strengthen youth businesses. The first thing that I wanted to share with you was a, is a, a framework or a model that has been um, developed by the Rockefeller Foundation. And uh, they are proposing that we categorize five key uh, area of uh, job opportunities uh, for um, ICT in, not specifically in the agricultural sector, but covering all sector, all segment of activities. But actually, even in the agricultural sector, we just need to, um, we, we can have agriculture in each of those different uh, uh, different levels. For example, we have the first um, uh, uh, type of activities that are generated through what they call impact sourcing, which has to do with um, uh, um, the, 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 um, the, the need or the objective of some companies to outsource uh, their product in developing countries. But uh, instead of, uh, for example, going there themselves, they can work directly with some youth who are who can be in rural area so that they help them and for example it can be by um by uh, i don't know by, by by editing document it can be by working on small so software etc and uh, we have already a number of experiences notably in india and kenya where youth who are in rural area are trying to see to seize the opportunity through of uh, the impact sourcing we also have uh, any kind of uh, online work that youth can do. Uh, this may not be specifically impact outsourcing, so it, this may not respond to the business uh, outsourcing uh, industry, but it can be just opportunity that they find themselves. So this is the second category of jobs. The third category of job it relates, to, relates to local content creation uh, innovation. So and when um, you've developed, for example, a website which can be addressing the, uh, we can be, for example, on a, an agricultural business or an agricultural um, uh, a co cooperative, that content generation is part of uh, is part of uh, another category of uh, jobs that you can also see due to ICTs. And we have, of course, uh, the fourth one, which is uh, they have labeled the e-public. Um, the e-public uh, good uh, kind of activities uh, in telecenters in Rwanda. Uh, the, 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 some people work on the e-governance program of the government and through that they can help the customers or they can help the users, for example, to pay for public services. And then we have the last one, which is uh, the entrepreneurship uh, 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 type of activities. At that level, they have, have categorized specifically companies. So you who are really entrepreneur and who try to seize business opportunities through those kind of activities. And, and now if we want to be uh, maybe more specific, I've tried to see uh, example of activities, example of opportunities that we can have throughout the value chain. Um, and then if you, you consider input supply level, uh, an example that of job that we can have are related to extension officers uh, related jobs. Um, uh, in, I want to give the example of um, a project that is being done in uh, Senegal, uh, through which uh, an application that is called Rice Advice that some of you may know, uh, an application that has been developed by um, Africa Rice, uh, help um, young people who are working in, a, in, in an organization called CIMA, which are the Centers for um, 
Centre d'exploitation des machines agricoles, so Centre for Exploitation of um, Agricultural ma Machines. Um, some youth who are working in those centres, they can use the platform, the rice advice platform, to give uh, advices to rice farmers. So this is, uh, and, and these, those advice are related to how, uh, how they can use, for example, the fertilizer so that they can have a better crop, so that they can have improved um, um, uh, pro productions. And other platform that are available can be also uh, a site cited for this category of, uh, of opportunities that we have. If we consider the production level, there are also many, many kind of uh, applications that we have. And um, you know, uh, most of the market information, not market information, most of the applications that are providing uh, um, uh, advisory services can be categorized at that level. We also have, for example, drone services that can be um, offered by young people. And CTA has been working on that uh, since uh, about one year, where uh, young entrepreneurs are encouraged and supported to provide uh, drone services for big uh, farms. So we do also have opportunities at the level of uh, the processing. Uh, at that level, I didn't find many, but I think um, when uh, you have ICT capacity and you are working with a company as a business process manager, you are already in the in the in that value chain, that specific segment, uh, benefiting from ICT job opportunities. And also, you can be, of course, just a trainer, training um, companies that are working in the processing industry of a specific commodity, for example. Regarding market trade, you know already many, many, many market market um, access application that exist. So I want develop that. At the consumption level, we can also have some specific um, uh, activities or let's say some specific applications. For example, in, uh, uh, in Nigeria, we have Chowberry, which is an application that helps um, uh, address food waste. We also have in Benin, uh, an application that people have developed that are uh, facilitating the order, the online order of food. And we have many, many of those, um, those applications in Europe. And those who are involved in those those uh, those market or those activities, they are not necessarily ICT people. They can just be a young entrepreneur who can be working around um, in urban area or maybe somehow in a suburb uh, sub rural areas if they have good connectivity and if there is a market, this can be done. We have many many cross cutting um, uh, uh, opportunities starting from, for example, the, the selling of SIM card, of course, that many people know, to the work around in telecenters, rural telecenter that still exists in many countries. We have the, also at that level, we have the offer of, uh, of um, financial services uh, uh, facilitated by ICT. We have an uh, example of NCBUPO in, um, in Uganda that is operating a platform and it is working with them. We have other uh, mobile payment services that youth can also get involved in even in rural areas. So at CTA, in the ICT for Right program, currently we have three uh, areas of activities. We have, first of all, youth entrepreneurship in um, ICT for RAC, and I will explain that. We have precision agriculture, where we work, for example, on drone services to support farmers to, let's say, cooperatives and maybe uh, bigger farmers to benefit from the opportunity that, are, that can be leveraged through uh, that, um, that technology. And we have also market linkages, so activities that can support access to markets. Do you, can you say maybe a bit more about um, mitigating to cities? How can we, yeah, we, how can we use ICT to motivate the young people to stay in agriculture? If the um, youth are in a uh, in a rural area or in an environment, it can be semi-rural, where what they're doing, uh, the work they're doing is attractive, is uh, profitable. They will clearly see where they are because mostly they are, uh, when they are in rural area, many youth are with their parents, okay? And they're in, in a setting that is appropriate to them, that they like. So if we, uh, we, we give them, or if they have uh, the opportunity to, if they have a business and the business is thriving, then, they can they will stay probably there um, and when you, you you give them the opportunity to use ICT to have for example better access to market when through mobile phone okay when uh, market information can be disseminated and if they can see that they have um, um, for example not so far from where they are 
if they can have a market, they can have buyers that are not that they can sell their product to, so that they they, they, they make more profit, so that they reduce a uh, waste uh, of, of of their products. Then they will have more opportunity, and if they have more opportunity, they will stay. So we need to give them the opportunity, but it implies that we have to improve the setting, the environment. So we've tried to think about um, what could be the different area in which uh, and the different uses that uh, we can have uh, on uh, ICT or with ICT if we are a young farmer or if we are a youth uh, and we are involved in, we are working in the agricultural sector. And we have come up with uh, four areas, four different areas. So the first one, and also the first uh, 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 area where we can support youth who are involved in agriculture, it is of course uh, addressing young farmers and young agro entrepreneurs. So at that level, we can more than in the past, and we can consistently use ICT to support their businesses. So when you you train them, for example, on how they can use ICT to better keep their record when you are working with a group owner and they, they have ICT tools to better improve their record, when they can use ICT to have more access to market, so mobile phone that they can use to have more access to market, or when they can benefit from any other, uh, any other um, uh, type of activity that can help them uh, improve their businesses, market their businesses. Um, the second layer uh, is the youth who are involved, uh, who are ICT CV, who are even ICT specialists, who can develop uh, ICT services and offer them to the agricultural sector. And at that level as well, we have been working consistently through activity that uh, some of you may have heard about that we call the AgriHack activities, where in the past we organized hackathons. Um, for our site in, uh, in Cibuco, an organization some minutes ago, a startup some minutes ago, they were they have been created out of one of those hackathons, and today they are offering services to more than four hundred thousand farmers through circles in Uganda. So, and now uh, this day we are no more organized hackathons, but we are working directly with uh, startups that uh, best startup that we can identify through different frameworks. And we give them some time opportunity to scale up their activities and also to service better um, agribusinesses and farmer or agricultural stakeholder in general. We have a third one, uh, which is more, I would say, um, it is a bit cross cutting because it's addressing all the different activities that we can have in agriculture that are uh, in, that are related to the value chain. So at that level, we are talking, for example, of um, uh, for the use of ICT to actually improve um, activities that are already existing in the agricultural sector, but that can be improved, that can be uh, uh, modernized somehow by ICT. So when you have extension officers, young extension officers that are using um, ICT devices, for example, the rice advice application that I mentioned uh, some minutes ago to, uh, to to do their work. This gives them more value. This is, is more valuable for them. So their work is more interesting. And um, when we were talking about um, um, encouraging youth to, to, to stay in rural area or to stay in agriculture, if their job is more valuable, if the profile of the job, the public profile of their job is improved, then agriculture will look more interesting for them. And we have a fourth layer, which is more um, addressing any person who is interested in agriculture. And um, through that uh, fourth channel, we've been, for example, organizing our blog competitions that we call Yobloco. We are no more doing it now, but we may still do it if needed. And um, at, at that level, we, uh, we engage, for example, journalists. We know that agriculture does not have a, a, a maybe a a very positive image everywhere all, all the time. So some journalists who are interested in uh, working in the agricultural sector through their, 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 their report, through a different activity that they do, they can help improve uh, the image of agriculture and they can help advocate for um, uh, more opportunities in the agricultural sector. So as you can see, this is really addressing all categories of youth. Um, this slide that you are seeing is just giving an example of a project um, on in which we work with we work with uh, young uh, farmers. Actually, it is a project that will will start next year in um, Senegal and Mali. So we'll be working uh, to support a young uh, uh, riziculteur, so rice farmers, and we have a number of activities. Some of them are touching ICTs, and that will be. Uh, this, this activity will be implemented in the project. It's a two-year project 
we will be working with Africa Rise on it. Uh, this project that um, that you are seeing now, uh, that for, for which you are seeing this slide, is also an, an, an example of activity that we have been doing to support Agripreneur. Uh, we launched a call for proposal uh, two or three years ago, and then uh, one of the projects that we have supported, we have supported its creation, is Agribusiness TV, that some of you may know. And what they do is that they promote young agripreneur, those who are innovative through web TVs, and they are very successful. And uh, the, one of the ideas we had for, by supporting that project was to uh, pro, uh, uh, promote role model so that you see that other young people are also in the agriculture, but also that uh, you learn from the innovation that are broadcast through those, um, um, those videos. Uh, we have also this, uh, uh, this uh, young entrepreneur that I've talked about. Uh, to, they were initially um, unemployed. Uh, the way they just finished their studies, they developed their mobile platform through uh, agri-hack activity. Today, they are serving uh, through circles, through about 70, 70 circles. They are serving 400 farmers, 400,000 farmers. They are also um, opening uh, offices in three other countries, Nigeria, um, Tanzania, Malawi, or, or Zambia. And on this slide that you are seeing, uh, you can you have somehow the process of our agri hack talent initiative, especially um, uh, how we are doing it now. Now we are focusing specifically on uh, people, on on entrepreneur who already have applications. So we are not doing any more hackathon. So we try to identify those who have good application through competition that we organized after having exchange uh, with uh, many players. So we have a multi stakeholder. A collaboration approach. Uh, we involve uh, incubators throughout uh, the different countries. We, we've been working with 26 incubators, for example. Um, we have been, uh, we, we do training, we do boot camps. Uh, they receive, for example, training on how they can be investor ready, investment ready so that they are able to grow their business once they have the opportunity. We train them also on uh, business modeling, how they can have successful business model that can help them grow as well. We give them tips, etc. Um, some of the applications that have been that have been uh, identified or developed through these uh, various activities are today serving more than 600,000 farmers or users, reaching them, agricultural users. Uh, we try to also link them with investors. Uh, for example, um, uh, uh, on the 13th of uh, October, so last month, we organized uh, with UNDP a, a meeting uh, at um, in Geneva where investors were there. So it was at the Social Good Summit, Geneva Social Good Summit. So some of the entrepreneurs that we are working with, we gave them the opportunity to pitch uh, before the investors. And we also help them uh, as that now at that level, we don't have a lot of resources, but now and then we help the best of them to scale their activities and we try to put them in contact with market players so that they have the opportunity to get involved with uh, in, 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 in deals with uh, people who can use their product or services. And we also do a lot of documentation of uh, what they are doing. Um, one of the results that we are very proud of, or impact, is because it's not directly our own contribution, um, uh, collectively, the startup that we have been working with, they have leveraged um, uh, one, more, more than 1 million euro as investment from different players, so not from CTA, from different players, which is helping them to consolidate their businesses. Now, um, to my last slide will, will, will suggest some recommendation, and I would like to also hear from uh, you what you think about those recommendations and, and maybe how we can effectively implement them because it interests all of us as, uh, as players. Uh, first of all, I think that we need really to promote youth role models, and this is partly what we are doing through Agribusiness TV, for example, to motivate other young people to get involved into agriculture and to innovate for the sector. So we do it not only for the um, agri agripreneurs themselves, those who, who, are, who are not ICT specialists, but those who are also ICT specialists can also be promoted as a role model, and this can really be uh, very valuable. Um, yeah, we need to uh, have more capacity in agribusinesses in general on ICT use. So giving them the capacity to better record the, um, the, the activities, giving them the capacity to benefit, for example, from um, a crowdfunding to, um, uh, to, 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 to leverage alternative finance, give them, giving them the opportunity to use better market information system that are increasingly available 
will help them support their businesses. Training them, for example, on social media use can help them market their products. And we have good examples in uh, in Kenya, for example, you, you know, I guess you know Mukli that uh, that, that experience has been done, has been doing, the, has been uh, been implemented there for a number of years now, through which uh, through Facebook and Twitter. Uh, our, our, our young entrepreneurs are finding new markets and they are using Twitter and Facebook extensively for that. So those platforms are becoming marketplaces. So we can, by training young people on, or by, by giving them the opportunity, we even have a Facebook page for the cooperative is already a, a means to help them promote their agribusiness. So we, can, we have a lot of things that we can do there. And that one, I mean, even in rural area that can be done quite easily. Of course, we need uh, to better support digital entrepreneurs, uh, those who are servicing the agricultural sector, in helping them to improve their business model. Because what we see now is that this area, this uh, market segment is quite new. So many young people usually that have not studied business management. And the ICT for Rack sector is another one which is a bit complicated also because the immediate uh, customer that uh, entrepreneur may want to address are the farmers who don't want usually to pay for the services. So um, how can we do what could be the best model that you can use in order to generate revenue and even become profitable as business this is like a, a, an important area of activities that and we can do implement many activities to support that i mean government for example need to or, or international organization can launch innovation fund we are already having can those kind of funds but we need to work on the, the what happens after um let's say the competition are organized to really ensure that uh, the adequate capacity building that are needed, the adequate market linkages that are needed are really put in place to support the entrepreneurs. Even those who are not involved in ICT, they can also, they can uh, showcase their, their projects uh, on those platforms. We have um, increasingly experiences in, like that in Africa. So that uh, apart from the bank that they may want to talk to, we know that banks are not really willing to give them resources because they don't have access to collateral. It is pretty difficult for them. But we can have the community, the crowd, or players that want just to donate funds that can help them have access to those funds. We know that, um, yeah, because before um, youth businesses grow and any business grow, you need to have capital. So how can we uh, use ICT as well? to promote uh, access to capital for youth. This is something interesting that um, a challenge that is interesting that we have to, uh, to tackle. Um, we have a number of incubation centers that are available in the agriculture or in ICT, but most of them are weak, are new and weak. So we need to strengthen those incubation centers, be the ICT incubation centers or ICT or agricultural incubation centers. And, uh, and so, so if we, we should see, we should develop a program to strengthen those schemes because as a development stakeholder, for example, CTA, we are not specialized in ICT and um, and many uh, players don't know really ICT for rag businesses. When you have those incubation spaces, they really um, can also leverage on their relationship with um, the, the market players to give more opportunities to rule to youth in rural area, but also in agricultural area. Thanks. And, yeah. I'm uh, sorry for interrupting, but there is a question just coming to that part now. So maybe you can also answer that question that comes from Nadine. And she's asking, can you give an example of a successful business model for an ICT service focusing on farmers, allowing the young provider to earn money and the farmer to receive a service for what yeah. you might not be able to pay the real price? That's what you already mentioned. So maybe you yeah. can just answer that question. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will give uh, two examples uh, if we have time. I don't know. Maybe the first example I will give is the um, is the we are working with a, a one of our winners. She's or they are from um, Botswana. They have a develop an application called um, M Agri. So it is M Agri is an application that uh, a platform that promote um, advisory services that 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 disseminate advisory services to, uh, to to farmers. So what they have tried to do from the onset is to work with players, bigger players that can pay for the services or that can give them access to um, let's say to uh, a, a large customer base. 
So they have directly started working with uh, telecom operators who have uh, access to a, a, a large customer base. And they, because they have succeeded in um, uh, 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 creating or developing a partnership with the telecom operator, now they have access to uh, hundreds of thousands of users. And now what they are doing, they are working with that telecom operator on a revenue sharing model. The information that they are disseminating through that, mobile, through that uh, telecom operator immediately is disseminated to about 200,000 farmers. So this is, a, this is a key model. So we are promoting more and more CTA, CTA the business to business model. I gave the case of Nsibuko in, uh, in, uh, in Uganda. They are working directly with SACOS, the, the, the cooperative. So the platform that they have, the Mobis platform, is not directly used by, uh, farm, by farmers, but um, it is a platform that is used by cooperatives to manage access to credit, to manage credit that they give to farmers, and also to manage also um, all the financial activities. So when, uh, because they have targeted SACOS cooperative, it is the SACOS who pay. And then the, the, the farmer who work with the SACO, they, they also have other, let's say, framework channels through which they uh, pay, for example, subscription to the SACO. Okay. There was one uh, a bit more previous. There was a question um, from Renate and she asked, are there any countries where you can already find good examples of young farmers working in this field of ICT for egg? You mentioned already um, some examples, but maybe you can say a bit more in which countries exactly. And then yeah. also second question that's always very important. Is there any chance we would could use these good examples in a way to upscale them? Well, I was giving the, the I was giving the case of uh, the Rice Advice yeah. uh, platform in in Senegal and in Mali. It has been also used there. It was at uh, a, an experiment, so I'm not sure that we have already, uh, let's say, uh, a very good case that is uh, that can be fully and easily generalized, scaled up. But it has been experimented for one year and more. And in Kenya, the situation is more widespread. We have many applications that are being used by young farmers and they just access market information. For several years, ESOCO has been disseminating market information through, um, uh, sometimes when you also use the voice, okay, IVR, you can also, this is also a way to, to, to use ICT to, to deliver information. So yeah, I think it comes back what but you said, um, well, it's they're still starting, so it's about promoting also youth role models. Yes, yes, but but honestly, in countries like where you have good connectivity, like Kenya, like South Africa, sometimes we already have examples that are that are there. Many many young young farmers, and sometimes they pay for that. So mm -hmm. they pay for that. Can now really access some information. Um, but of, in most cases, farmers are not in are not willing or don't have the means to pay. And in most cases, um, those who are paying for that are either sacos but they can also pay sub subscription to SACO at some point in time or development organizations that, uh, that are supporting the development of agricultural sector. Yes, of course, we can, we can upscale, but usually when you want to replicate, it is sometimes difficult because you don't have the same social or technical setting when you want to um, upscale, not, not upscale, when you want to, um, to, 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 to replicate a model. Now, to upscale them, it's usually we need resources and in many cases it can be a, an issue but clearly progressively uh, this is also things that we are seeing here and there okay um i think there was one int very interesting question about the costs to create jobs in this ict sector there's different opportunities to try to create jobs and one opportunity is ict but if you compare it to other opportunities does it really make sense to put money into that jobs for ICT? There are all kinds of jobs in uh, ICT for us, all yes. kinds of jobs. Exactly. And when, when somebody is selling, the, I mean, okay, if we may consider when somebody is selling, I don't know, SIM cards in a rural area, that it is some, some sort of a job. But also when somebody is in a tele center in a rural area and, uh, and, and serving the, the client that are coming, and if the tele center is focusing on um, on um, on agriculture or or, or agriculture, agriculture activities, it's also also a kind of uh, job already. And to have to to give the capacity to those uh, to those youth who are be involved in those jobs, you don't need much. You don't need to, to train them on how they can mm -hmm. use the uh, computer. Um, in other cases, it can be very 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 difficult because if you want to train somebody to become a developer of a solution, 
Mm -hmm. uh, then, first of all, I mean, I don't know where you are starting from, but if you want to give them uh, the, 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 the knowledge to develop application, it can take years sometimes, especially if you also want to include in, 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 in um, how can I say, uh, you can, uh, business management and the like. This, this is not something that you can do, uh, let's say, all of a sudden or just overnight. So the, the cost to create job in ICT for Ag, it depends on the job that you are you are considering. It can be one day like one day job, so it can require almost nothing, but it can also require millions. Then someone asked, do you have any experience with ICT and the empowerment of women? To be honest, we have not done a, a lot. I mean, when I say a lot, I mean very consistent project just focusing on improving um, women involvement in that. I have not done a lot, but we, we did, I mean, I would say small, small activities now and then. For example, we organized like a debate in two, two years ago on that specific issue. How should we improve youth in, women involvement in ICT for RAG? We did a, an education about that. We are planning next year to do uh, to launch a competition, one of our pitch agri high competition, to select um, uh, startups uh, co-founded co-founded by women entrepreneur by, by uh, young female entrepreneur and then give them uh, all the support that we give to all entrepreneurs that are involved in our activities. So we have some, so a number of activities that we do like that now and then. Thank you very much for this very interesting input and also the very interesting questions that came up. Thanks for organizing this.